everyone. Thank you so much for being here today on this very special anniversary of Epcot, 30 years. But before I move on, I want to take a special moment to, re to recognize the Mariachi Cobra. have mesmerized us since day one. They have been here for 30 years. Yeah. We're fortunate that five of the members are still here playing with us today, and four of them are here this morning, or this afternoon, and I'd like to recognize them. Randy Carrillo. It stands for culture, discovery, celebrating human achievement. It's amazing the impact this place has on people. When people come, they enjoy their day. They enjoy the experiences we offer, their time with family and friends. But hopefully, when they're experienced at Epcot, through the stories that we tell, there's a hope for the future and an understanding of how great each one of us can be and how we can contribute to that future. And some people, it impacts their lives as well. You know, when I think back to my early days of experiencing Epcot as a guest, I remember being a young girl in high school, thinking about what I wanted to be when I grew up. I was at an impressionable age, very influential. And I remember coming and visiting Epcot. I went to uh, Spaceship Earth, I went to Horizons, I listened to this. The great smell of the oranges and horizons, for those that remember. Walking World Showcase, and it was inspirational for me. As a young girl, I loved math and science. I was fascinated by culture. I was curious about the world, and then I came here. It contributed to the way I thought about the future. It gave me hope. It made me realize that each one of us can be a part of what's great about the future. Woo! I went on to become an engineer, and I was fortunate enough to be an engineer here at Disney for over a decade. I went on and I was able to travel the world. I was inspired when I came here of the people that have different perspectives and different traditions, and they tell me stories of where they came from, from places that were so different from my hometown. And I've been able to 
not only travel, but now I'm here back at Epcot, and I could not be more honored, more proud, more humble to be here as part of this experience. You know, it's interesting, I just came from a luncheon where we were able to celebrate and reminisce with cast members who were here on opening day and are still here working at Epcot today. There's more than 150 of them. We have more than 1,000 cast members are here at Walt Disney World Resort that were here on opening day. They're the ones that are amazing. Yeah. They're the ones that are here, that have been here every day providing these wonderful experiences. But as I said, this is a great place to be. It tells great stories. It gives hope for people of the future and how everybody comes together to create something special. And hopefully it moves everyone. But as I said, for some people, it can be a turning point in their life. I'd like to share one such story. Back in 1984, there was a young girl. She was nine years old. Her name was Rachel, and she came to visit Epcot. She walked around with her family, and she was taken away when she was in Morocco. She was mesmerized. She was just inspired by the Moroccan culture and the art. As she explored the Museum of Arts and Culture, she just could not forget it. As her life went on, she ended up in college, and as she reflected on what she wanted to study, she remembered back to that experience in Morocco. She decided to study anthropology and culture, and she wanted to specialize in the Moroccan heritage. She ended up going to Morocco as an exchange student. She studied there. She ended up getting her master's degree in cultural anthropology, specializing in Morocco, and became known for the women, women's experience in Morocco. What's interesting is she was there and she met her husband, her soon-to-be husband, who is Moroccan, and then came back to the United States. She now is an associate professor at the Rollins College in Winter Park, Florida, and she's an associate professor of cultural anthropology focusing on Morocco. What's interesting is that we had a WDI creator who was working in one of our gallery at Morocco and wanted to focus on refreshing it. And this WDI cast member didn't know about Rachel. And so she, but she had heard about um, Dr. Rachel Newcuff. And so she reached out to Dr. Rachel and asked her, because of her specialty in Moroccan history, if she would be willing to come and help her with the gallery. What she didn't know is that Dr. Rachel Newcomb was that young girl at nine years old who was inspired by the gallery that she was about to consult on. That is pretty remarkable. What a big difference. You know, there's another wonderful story. The, the story about this place. You know, over 30 years ago, right before it opened, there was a lot of construction going on. This place was hustling and bustling, people scurrying around to finish the final elements um, to, before they could open this wonderful place. It was the first day that the Voices of Liberty could come out and they could rehearse. But because there was so much going on, they actually had to have their hard hats on. So they came out into the area, they walked over to the American Adventure, they were in the rotunda, they were surrounded by construction workers. Operating participants, corporate sponsors, cast members were everywhere trying to finish up what they were focused on. What was amazing is they began to sing. And all of a sudden, around them, it became silent. Everyone stopped what they were doing. And they focused on the Voices of Liberty. It was one of the very first Epcot magical moments. And so here, to share that song with us, are the Voices of Liberty.
That was just beautiful. Equally beautiful today as it was 30 years ago. You know, the Voices of Liberty were here 30 days, 30 years ago, and 30 days ago, and 30 years ago, and 30 years and days from now. But for a moment, what I'd like to do is recognize Debbie, Debbie, Debbie Johnson, who was here 30 years ago. That's 57 years ago. This cast member joined the Walt Disney Company at Disneyland in Anaheim. This gentleman worked directly by Walt Disney and through the opening of the Disneyland Resort. And he served for decades as the Executive Vice President of Walt Disney Imagineering. He's a Disney ambassador and a Disney legend. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating and honoring Marty Scalar. there was this big announcement that was made announcing the opening of Epcot Center. Now, when we opened up the Magic Kingdom here at Walt Disney World, there was pretty strong understanding and knowledge of what this Magic Kingdom would be all about as it followed just a few short years after the opening of the Disneyland Resort. But not many people knew what Epcot Center was going to be. So I had the privilege of being assigned part of the responsibility as the opening team for the Epcot Center Preview Center, which was located in Town Square at the Disney Story on Main Street, USA. That was when I first became aware of this incredible place we call Epcot today, and that is where millions upon millions of people learned about the vision of our founder, Walt Disney. I can remember those two years counting down to the opening day vividly, and in particular, the last six months. When you step back and think about what was happening here on this property at that time, we were effectively doubling the size of what we had offered since 1971 with Epcot's opening in 1982. A daunting task, a very hard and challenging task, but one that only Disney could do in terms of thinking about bringing this vision to life. I remember six months before doing site tours and property tours from both the monorail station out in front of the park, looking at the construction of Spaceship Earth and all of World Showcase beyond that. I remember walking with hard hats, personal protection gear throughout the construction site, learning so much and seeing so many people so hard at work. I can also remember the 24 hours before the opening of Epcot. I was, I was a supervisor in the parking area, and I will never forget, like many, many people on property at that time, working endlessly 24 hours a day for uh, days if not weeks on end to get to that opening day. I remember starting standing out in the darkness of night, illuminated by parking lot lights, 
and watching the first car roll in at 3 a.m. that morning. I have to tell you quite honestly, the rest of it was a bit of a blur because from that moment, there was nothing but craziness that transpired. There was a combination of unseen chaos and heightened euphoria. And at that moment, when those turnstiles opened and we welcomed our first guest to Epcot Center, it all began 30 years ago. You may remember, if you've seen the video, or actually here on opening day, there was a song and a tribute done by our entertainment team entitled, We've Just Begun to Dream. And in Dream we did. And I think over the last 30 years, the dreams have been amazing in the way they've come to life, both now and in the future. There were so many firsts over the course of those 30 years, and for me, the first ride on Spaceship Earth, I, can, I will always remember that. The first arrival of our international students who bring to life World Showcase each and every day. Absolutely. <laughs> so many. The first parade, you remember the first parade. The first nighttime spectacular, the first illumination show. It really was an extraordinary period of time uh, for all of us. And there's firsts have, have come more and more frequently each and every day. On a personal note, for me, there are incredible memories that I have as well. I can remember in 1997, just a few countries down, finishing up a meal with my family in Germany and watching my mother and father watch for the very first time the holiday version of Illuminations, Reflections of Earth. And I looked over to my mom and she had a tear in her eye. She was struck by the awe and beauty of that performance. And little did we know that would be her last holiday with us. In 1998, I can remember meeting my future wife, Marty a woman who has extraordinary patience to this day, I had an opportunity to meet her right here. In 19, or I should say in 2007, fast forwarding, I was given the privilege of leading Epcot, and my daughter is now 10 years old, and I spent a lot of time in this park throughout the weekend. And I can remember sitting here with my family at Candlelight just last year, and looking forward to this year. So there are extraordinary memories that have been created for me. I'm hoping that whether you're here for the very first time, or at the very end, this is a great memory for you. You know, when you think about the history of Epcot, it all began with our founder, Walt Disney, who I know you all will agree is an extraordinary visionary. It was in the, it was in the fall of 1966, just two months before he passed, where he announced to the world the vision of Epcot. It's a, it's, a, it's a video that I watched this weekend because every time I think about Epcot, I think about Walt Disney and the incredible vision that he brought forward. He said some words there that really set the stage for what Epcot is all about today. And if you don't mind, I'd like to share them with you through this reading. Walt said, the most exciting and by far the most important part of our Florida project, in fact, the heart of everything we'll be doing in Disney World, will be our experimental prototype community of tomorrow. We called it we call it EPCOT, spelled E-P-C-O-T, Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. EPCOT will be a community of tomorrow that will never be completed, but will always be introducing and testing and demonstrating new materials and new systems. And EPCOT will always be a showcase to the world of ingenuity and imagination. It will never cease to be a living blueprint of the future where people actually have a life they can't find any place else in the world. Everything in Epcot will be dedicated to the happiness of the people who live, work, and play here, and those who come here from around the world to visit our world showcase, our living showcase. So we're often asked, would Walt be happy with what we're doing here at Epcot? Would he be proud? I can honestly say to you, without a doubt, Walt would be up on the stage with a smile on his face, thanking all of you for everything that you do as guests who visit us and cast members who play and work here. So thank you very much for the last 30 years. It's been extraordinary. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you the president of Walt Disney Parks and Resort Operations, U.S. and France, a raving Epcot fan, Meg Crofton. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, one of the favorite parts of my role here at Walt Disney World is the privilege that I have to hear from our guests who write to share their memories of their Disney vacations. So I'd like to share three short letters that we received very recently from our guests. 
and all of them have to do specifically with moments that our guests experienced here at Epcot. The first comes from Indiana, from a guest who wrote this. Dear Disney, I just wanted to share with you how the Circle of Life film at Epcot was a great influence to me. I first saw the film in June of 2008. It really inspired me to start recycling. I've recycled approximately 1,500 pounds of paper, magazines and cardboard, and over 5,000 plastic bottles and containers. We've been to Disney three times since, and I always try to see the film with my kids. This November, we are coming back, and I'm bringing my parents. I hope this film will inspire them the way that it did me. The second letter comes from Wisconsin, from a guest who wrote, I just wanted to compliment the cast members working at the shops in the UK Pavilion in World Showcase. We went in there with our 10-month-old, and one cast member in particular could not believe how happy our baby was. She kept coming back and showing him to everyone else in the shop. I mentioned to her that maybe the baby thought she was Mary Poppins. And at that moment, she started to twirl around and sing songs for Mary Poppins. Our baby just laughed and thought she was the funniest thing. That is my story from our eight nights here. It's not just the fireworks and the characters that make Disney special. It's moments such as this. And then there is this letter, which we received this summer from New York. October 3rd, 1982 is the day my wife and I got married. My wife loved Mickey Mouse and wanted to spend the first three days after our wedding at the Magic Kingdom before moving to another part of Florida to enjoy the beach and the sun. The week before our wedding, radio commercials and TV stories began to pop up about the grand opening of Epcot. At the time, we were clueless that Epcot was being built and quite surprised that it would open just a few days before our, our arrival. It was exciting to accidentally be part of Epcot's grand opening. I have great memories of that visit almost 30 years ago. We visited all the different countries, watched a few sidewalk shows, ate dinner at a great restaurant, and I marveled at all the technical displays as I am an electronics technician with an engineering degree. Hopefully you and your staff are able to look back on the last 30 years and cite thousands of great memories and accomplishments as my wife and I take this opportunity to wish Epcot happy 30th anniversary and many more to come. You know, those are three great letters which we treasure, and they are just a small sample of the thousands of comments and feedback that we get from our guests who come to experience this park. If you multiply those type of experiences that we just heard about in those letters by 30 years, you have some idea of the impact that Epcot and our Epcot cast brought their children, brought their parents, and come back time and time again to celebrate births and jobs and graduations and all of life's victories. At an anniversary such as this, we have our choice of statistics that we could use to describe 30 years in Epcot. It could be the number of guests who have visited, the number of times illuminations has been enjoyed, or the number of international cast members who have come here to share their cultures with us. And while we are so very proud of all of those things, the real measurement, the measurement that defines why this park is here, is a number that we really don't know what it is. But it is the millions upon millions of wonderful family memories that have been born here. Magical moments that our guests have carried home and treasured. Who helps make those memories? Well, Walt Disney told, him, told us that himself when he once said, you can dream, create, design, and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it requires people to make the dream a reality. And with that in mind, let's greet the people who make this dream a reality. Please welcome our cast members at Epcot.
represent their teams from throughout the attractions of Future World and the pavilions of World Showcase, as well as all the teams that support them, both on stage and backstage. At this time, I'd like to make a special request. If you were here on October 1, 1982, when Epcot was officially open, whether you're a guest, a cast member, or one of our fabulous partners, please stand and wave so we can recognize you too. And I would like to share one more thing this afternoon. These were the words that were spoken by Card Walker, then chairman of the Walt Disney Company, as he dedicated Epcot on October 1, 1982. This is what he said. To all who come to this place of joy, hope, and friendship, welcome. Epcot is inspired by Walt Disney's creative vision. Here, human achievements are celebrated through imagination, wonders of enterprise, and concepts of a future that promises new and exciting benefits for all. May Epcot entertain, inform, and inspire. And above all, may it instill a new sense of belief and pride in man's ability to shape a world that offers hope to people everywhere. That was our wish 30 years ago, and that remains our wish today. On the count of three, please join me in saying happy anniversary to Epcot. Ready? One, two, three. Happy anniversary!
concept here to his left. And we'll talk more about John, as I said later. And here's another early shot of the uh, development of the project with John DeCure Jr. with John and me.
Right.